Aloha, and welcome to Eyes of, on Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox, and uh, today I really appreciate you joining us here at uh, Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, if you'd like to see any of our shows, go to thinktechhawaii.com, and we'll give more information on other information, how to contact us. But uh, I have an interesting subject here today. Many of you have gone to Waikiki, the jewel of the Pacific, the tourists gather, and it's a beautiful place. And what we're going to do today is show you something that uh, many thousands, if not a couple million uh, over the years have visited Waikiki, and uh, is not aware that the simple things as the outdoor showers, and they are presenting a problem and have presented a problem for many, many years, as far back as the Jeremy Harris era, but they still present problems. And those problems are health risk and health concerns. And, and the state of Hawaii, Department of Health, has actually spoken to those issues. And those issues are those kinds of concerns where bacteria in the water, uh, and, and we're going to uh, get a little deeper. We've been investigating this for some while now, and uh, we have some documents here that we'll share with you, and kind of interesting, in, in that um, we wonder, we hear talk about uh, cleaning the earth and keeping the oceans clean, and the environmental concerns and, and all of that. And, and we know that staph and some of the other uh, really bad bacteria are causing wreaking havoc on some people in their health. And those that are compromised with the immune deficiencies visit the beach and not knowing what they're exposing themselves. They're mainly, like myself, I'm always worried about a suntan, uh, getting sunscreen lotion on me. But even sunscreen lotion is a problem. So. I want to show you a few pictures here uh, and give you, bring your attention to something that's, uh, so uh, the first shot here, when we say outdoor showers, now this is a state of affairs here, a state of the conditions at the outdoor showers at the Waikiki. This area, we're talking about an area between Queens Beach and Kuhio or Kapahulu Groin. That's a, uh, consisting of about eight, nine, or seven, eight, nine showers such as these. Now, you, you go and you bathe, and it's supposed to, the theory is, this water is to percolate into the ground, and the sand is left in the dry box or what have you. I don't know how it really works, but in theory. But here's the problem. These water showers... These showers are not connected to the sewer line, and the sewer line is not that far. So the standing water creating slime, and also you'll find um, tabs, chlorine tabs, that the city management has placed in there to kill the bacteria. But people, what you think is waves may have washed up on shore and uh, gotten the sidewalks wet, in reality, it's actually waste water. Now, some might think, well, a shower, what is wrong with shower water? Well, it's nasty water, first of all. And I don't know anyone that would want to wade, uh, wade or bathe or rinse off or wallow or lie on the beach in this kind of water. And this soil or the sand that this water touches is depositing bacteria and percolating in the ocean or into the ground, but the bigger problem is that it's running into the ocean. And um, now, you know, it's so easy for someone to say, well, this is a matter that the environmentalists are creating a problem, creating a concern, raising, you know, making trouble about much to do about nothing. But this is a real serious problem. First of all, there's a Clean Water Act that is of concern, a federal act. There is a state law. There is uh, building codes that have come to concern that sewage should not, again, sewage should not be placed on the, the beach. It should not be allowed to flow from the beach into the ocean. And therefore, when people are lying there sunning, they're not knowing that they are being exposed to bacteria. And this is a site here, this picture that we see here. 
is an actual, we were told initially that there were no flows from these showers to the ocean. So we went down and documented this by photographing it and also by uh, taking drone shots, overhead shots. And so that you'll understand, this is, as I began to say, this is not about an individual's assessment as a citizen. This is, we went and we recovered documents from the state health department. And on, and this is some while back, nothing gets done at a fast pace here. And um, I guess once you hear this letter, it would be, you could go away and conclude that the state health department's bark is bigger than its bite. That's a, the only take that I can take away from this. And then, September 2012, the state went to the beach area and uh, they did a wastewater spill complaint inspection from outdoor showers along the Cool Hill Beach between Kapahulu Groin to the police substation. Well, we went further than that and to document. We wanted to see for ourselves firsthand, are these showers and the water flowing and percolating as they say they are, or are they actually going into the ocean? Are they exposing people? All of these questions. And what we did in fact find and documented, here's one example of the photograph you see here now. This is near the Queens Beach, the concession area. This is not beach water, folks. This is not a wave that has washed over and splashed. This is wastewater or sewage flowing down from the, the shower into the ocean, as we've shown you, holes and drainage there. Now, you would think uh, this is the jewel of the Pacific. This is the jewel of Waikiki. It's, it's an attraction. Many thousands and thousands of people come here per month. But yet, this is what we expose them to. I, I believe we can do better, and I know we can, and I know the law requires us to, to do better. But I spoke with uh, Jason Wool of the, uh, the Parks and Recreation. He's one of the managers there. And he attempted to explain to me that the reason they do not have these things attached to the sewer lines is that when it rains, the rain then washes into the storm drain and then goes into the sewer line and therefore creating a potential for uh, f flooding or backup or overflow of the sewage system. Now, folks, that's hard to accept because we're putting high rises along the same area in Waikiki with hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of new units demanding and placing a demand and businesses on these uh, these showers and the the uh, sewage area, sewage line. So how could a bathroom or a shower, an outdoor shower, overwhelm the system when high rises are not? The shot here that you see here, this is another, yet another example of where they claim water is not going into the ocean. We've documented it now. The state cannot say that it is not happening. The city and county of Honolulu cannot say. So imagine now the people at the end there near the beach, and this is sewer water flowing into the ocean, and people and the children are playing in the streams and that, that is made from the runoff. I don't want to sound like an alarmist, but the problem here is that they say that it costs too much in a rebuttal to fix this problem the proper way. It costs too much. But what is the actual cost to one's health? What is one that comes here and find themselves with staph infection, maybe triggered by visits to the shower or standing in the water or what have you? And you know, uh, we were able to actually see people standing there and going, relieving themselves or urinating in, in and near around the showers there when the water hit them. And we also saw People, uh, one lady, for example, their baby was uh, apparently had a mishap or went to the bathroom in the pampas, cleaned the pampas off, and then took the baby and washed it at the shower. So 
Again, if you notice the green slime in this one photograph that we're showing here. Now, this is running off and look as though uh, I, I would say 98% of the people that, that I watched there for about 35 or minutes to an hour, we observed approximately 98% of them got out of the water and went to the shower before they left the beach. Soap, shampoo, all of those things are used in, then, in these showers and then they are allowed to rush down. Now, you wouldn't think that mosquitoes would be a problem, but uh, the state health department documented in one instance uh, a visit, mosquito larvae. Now, we documented here soap scum, scum of just really uh, horrible, nasty substance uh, just floating on the water. Would you want to be part of that? How about coming to Waikiki and sunning yourself? and wallowing in a soup of wastewater. Now, the state told them uh, that the city and county of Honolulu, on September 13, 2012, staff conducted a site investigation of five outdoor showers along Kuhio Beach between the Kapahulu groin to the police beach substation. The investigation verified the sand traps of three outdoor showers near Liliuo Kulani Avenue, Ulunui Avenue, and the avenue site flowed down a steep slope and directly into the ocean. That was 2012. The bark is bigger than the bite. No citation, no violations. But uh, the state informs the city and county of Honolulu that in this letter in 2012, the wastewater spills may subject the city to provisions of HRS Chapter 342D and Hawaii Administrative Rule 116206-1, including penalties not to exceed $25,000 per day. Yet, no fines were assessed, no fines were levied, and they're still operating. And whereas the state says they visit five of the showers, we visit at least seven or, or eight of them, I think. And uh, each one of them found their way to the water or in the ocean. Now, you see the children there in this photograph playing down at the receiving end of the water. And you can see, should this be going on in Hawaii? Should this be going on at the Jewel of the Pacific, Waikiki? Uh, now, we're not trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. We just know historically what the concerns are with bacteria, with staff, and Clean Water Act, and also why it should go to the uh, sewer is that we've now learned about the impacts of, and the constituents in sunscreen lotion, how it impacts the reefs, and what have you. So that becomes a problem. And also the, the sand itself, the sand, harbors some bacteria, and uh, we don't know what kind, uh, if it's E. coli or whatever is in the soil uh, from the years, the aerobic bacteria or the bacteria that builds up there and just sits there every, day in, day out. Now, the problem here is that the city uh, believes, as, a, as a, they communicated to me, that this really is not a big problem. Well, we actually talked to Mr. Trevor Ozawas, or City Councilman Trevor Ozawas. Uh, he is a councilman for Waikiki District. And uh, we talked with his office, and they shared with us that they visited the site two years ago, and based on complaints they had received, and uh, the complainant said that, re informed them that everything was okay, had been addressed and fixed. Well, today you see, apparently, it either broke again or it was never fixed. And my assessment is uh, it was broken, still broken. Now, this is an interesting picture. You see this picture, and you can see where the sand has been wet. What is it wet from? Is it wet from the waves from the ocean on high tide? 
or is it from a sprinkler system? Well, no. What it really is, this more sand and the lady you see sitting there in it now is actually wet from the wastewater from the showers. That is the actual uh, source of the moisture. And she's unsuspectingly there with her young baby and young children and other people with their children sitting and lying and wallowing and sunning in this water stained uh, sand with bacteria from upstream, which is a shower. So right now what I'm going to do is take a break and we'll be back and we're talking about the dirty showers in Waikiki and you might want to pay attention to this and pay close attention and let's see what we can do to ask the city and county and we'll ask them maybe we'll invite them on think tech and uh, we'll be back shortly in about a minute take care Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities. Welcome back uh, to the Eyes of Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox, and this is Think Tech Hawaii. And if you'd like to see some of our shows, go to thinktechhawaii.com, and there you can get all of the shows that posted and other hosts or other uh, shows that we broadcast out. So please do that. Go to thinktechhawaii.com. And um, we're talking about the showers, outdoor showers at Waikiki between the Kapahulu Groin and Queens Beach. Now, I'm, I'm referencing a, an, an old document, when I say old, uh, because it's, the document is dated 2012, a law enforcement or an enforcement document, inspection by the state. Now, I can't tell you why the state didn't take any action, but what I do can tell you is that what I can tell you is that the state did visit the site, and they visited the site to inspect, based on complaints, a wastewater being allowed to run into the ocean from these showers. So, again, this letter that I'm looking at that I have here, it, it says from the state, Please be aware that causing or allowing any wastewater system on your property to create or contribute to a wastewater spill, including showers, wash water, discharges, is a violation of Section 1162-06, subsection G, Hawaii Administrative Rules. Uh, uh, again, I want to emphasize that this isn't something that I'm placing my interpretation or projecting on this subject. This is serious. Water pollution is a very serious matter. When you have a mixture of people, human beings, and children, young children, and the seniors that are going there and unknowingly wading and wallowing and bathing, uh, it becomes a problem. We can do better. We have to do better because legally it is a requirement uh, to prevent this. Now, this is an example of, uh, and I'll read in an inspection report later, where the same situation was mentioned back in 2012. Almost to date, it's the same condition. So 
Outdoor Shower One across from Street of Marriott. The water in the outdoor water feature appeared fairly clear. One chlorine tablet was noted in the shallow pool, and uh, the shower sand trap was not overflowing. The water level was about six inches below the concrete pavement. Here's a picture with the scum. I don't have any explanation for that one. I honestly don't. I, I can't bring my mind to accept this, that here in Honolulu, Hawaii, we have the jewel of the Pacific, Waikiki Beach, and we have scum for thousands of people traverse this area, come and go to this area. And we, in turn, have this condition sitting there and have been in this condition for some 20 years, and yet the current administration is explaining it away, as it one said to me yesterday in discussion, was that the rail is taking a great bit of our resources. So therefore, the, if the rail is that costly, how costly is it to, I would ask, to the people that are sickened by this condition of soap scum, bacteria, urine-laden water, bacteria-laden sand, washing to the ocean, and you're wallowing and playing and swimming in it. What's that cost? And unfortunately, when people get sick, they probably wouldn't be related to their visit to Waikiki Beach. Now this is, these, the scum, you can't call it soap suds because it's not. The, it's just sitting there and it had a kind of a foul odor to it, but we didn't want to get too close. But again, you can see this for yourself. The outdoor shower number two at KLO Lani Avenue, this outdoor shower has a waterfall feature along the Kalakawa Street side of the shower. The shower is probably the one complainant identified as one of the problematic showers. The waters in the waterfall feature appeared fairly clear. A couple of chlorine tablets were noted in the water. The shower sand trap was not overflowing. Again, why do they need chlorine tablets in these waters? Must be concerned with bacteria, would you say? Quite possible. Number three, the outdoor shower at number three, Lily Okalani, and street from the Pacific Beach Hotel, the water and the outdoor feature appeared to be stagnant, and there was, were lots of mosquito larvae. The shower sand trap overflowed onto the surrounding beach, and the shower water flowed towards the high water mark. We watched the flow of water for a good 30 minutes to see if the shower would eventually reach the ocean. Noted, lots of people walking through the water. The flow stopped. It disappeared in beach sand just short of high water mark. Again, now this isn't just someone, anyone writing this. This is the state health department inspectors from the wastewater branch. So m the biggest question that I have in, in this whole process is that if we know that it's wastewater and we know people are going to come in contact with it, and we're talking about thousands of people, the average person that go to the beach is going to wash the sand at a minimum from them. And then they are using soap and shampoo. Now, as part of this condition that the, the state placed on the city and county of Honolulu during this visit in 2012, we recommend the city staff inspect the shower traps and dry wells and implement the following. Verify percolation rates, all outdoor shower dry wells, a poorly draining dry well is symptomatic of plugging of sand, matted hair, scum, debris that may result in the frequent backups of sand traps. Per percolation rates may also diminish over the time. Uh, plugging may occur through the public's use of soap and suntan lotion. Signs should be posted at each outdoor shower to prohibit use of soap while showering. Well, the city did comply with that but it's posted high, and, and if you look at the photograph that we have right there up now, this one has been closed. Why is it closed? Because 
it posed a threat to the people because of the slime, because of the green matter that grows on it, and the, the algae. And generally, when algae bloom and, and grow thick, you got high, it's rich in nitrate, nutrients or something. So clearly, there's a problem. And it has no reason to be there along Waikiki Beach. Absolutely. There is just no way. Now, outdoor shower number five behind the police station at Waikiki Beach, the bistro, the shower sand trap overflowed onto the surrounding beach. The shower was immediately seeped into the beach sand. The shower is located a good distance from the ocean. And in five, they had another one here. The shower had a rock wall and the ocean side of the shower. The shower sand trap overflowed and shower water flowed around the rock, which we showed you. That was the one with the scum in it. And uh, again, the waves flowed halfway up the slope and sucked the shower water out with each receding. I, I'm, I'm lost for an explanation. I, I'm still searching uh, in our process, in this investigation, and to ask the city why. Why would they allow such a dirty condition to exist and exposing people to this kind of uh, condition? It's not environmentally sound. It can be easily fixed. Now, we were told, again, there were some concerns and, and hinted, but we were told by a city official that if they allow it to hook up to the sewer lines, the sewer lines would cause a backup and cause a major overflow of the sewer onto the streets. And as I pointed out to you earlier, we have high rises being built as I speak right now, and they're not concerned with backup, but a small shower that is just using, in theory, fresh water and generating fresh water. So there's something amiss here. Something is wrong. And, and I think the mayor and his administration uh, should own up to this one and fix it and, and refrain from exposing people to these conditions. They're not healthy. They're not clean. They're not good. And they're not good for the environment. And uh, again, if you're down there, uh, the picture that we have now, uh, it is a actual shower. And you can see in the dark side there up, up top, there's a big medallion that says no soap and no shampoo and drains to the ocean. Uh, that should be noted. And I was told by the city official that well, they have no way of policing that. So, in other words, we're just got to live with it, I guess, un unless we demand more of the mayor and the city administration. And, and we're going to contact uh, Councilman Trevor Ozawa and see if he has any comments or anything to add in the future. And we'll be back and talking about this. And uh, I appreciate you listening in. And again, uh, this is Eyes on Hawaii on the thinktechhawaii.com. So please, if you want to see, view some of our shows in the earlier, go to thinktechhawaii.com. And aloha.